How is it going, people? We are back with another BB Tag podcast. Team building in this game, we're actually going to be discussing this right now because there's a lot of ways you can do this. It's not like, again, like we said at the end of the last one, it's not like Dragon Ball Fighters where you primarily want to build it around locking the opponent down and not letting them play the game or even going for zero to deaths. In this game, there's a lot of ways you can do it. In fact, contrary to what people might think because it's Makoto here, these two teams are actually good examples of this. And yes, I got this off of double random select. Yeah, Makoto's a solo character in a tag team game, but Jin is an amazing assist character and a really strong resonance anchor. So, that just works across the board, and his 6P can actually really help with Makoto's pressure situations, which is what she wants. And, similar thing with Lene. She is primarily known as a pressure character, and Blake can actually really help with that. Mainly due to her Nightshade assist. Again, if you hear that, my apologies. Sometimes that hits behind her, sometimes it doesn't. No. How did I? No, no, no. Nice. That's the stagger situation right there, and that was really good. Oh god, are you gonna get the link off of this? No. Nice bag out. That was actually meant to be Astral, not fucking Fire Clown. Nice catch. Oh my god, that that pose actually reminds me. I can't find it on Twitter anymore, but I because it's all buried and everything else. But I if I remember this right. Somebody managed to do a team pose with Hazuma and Makoto just right to make it look like Makoto was getting humped. I'm not making that up. Oh my god. Can we not? Let's not and say we did. And don't worry, I'm not going to be able to put that in because I can't find the photo anymore. Oh my god. But the positioning was just too perfect that I had to mention it. Okay, this might be another case of decent of a decent team because Tanger has a lot of issues with fighting it out full screen without the use of Spark Bolt, but Naoto can actually cover that. She can do both. I'll say this, she can do both, but she's generally considered the assist character just slightly. That's just my opinion, but I'm not sure. Gordo is a case where he does both equally well because, well, it's Gordo. It's Gordo, he goes with everybody. Like, he's basically the edge of the night. Uh, not entirely. Because Gordo has one thing that S doesn't. Cross combo active switch abuse. Oh, yeah, I thought you... Oh, my God, it's Bonka. That's the joke. But Noel is in general considered the point character. Now this team, now that team can be interesting. Okay. I got. It. I got. It. No, ah, ah. What? 
You can tech that, but it's a reset, and it's a very picky one. Nice catch. I love doing that. But no, how was that Lene? She wasn't even on screen for like a good minute. How did you fuck that up? Jesus, does that do any of these look like Lene to you? You really had to go there. Ooh. New title. Once we refresh, I'm going to temporarily leave the room to check that. But that's not going to be until after this game. Okay, this is another example of a good team build. Mitsuru Mai. Do you even know how to wald? Yes. Eh, then again, then again, you've probably seen some really good walds in your time. Yeah, I, but at the same time, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this properly. So, with the Azure guy needs to do this match. I'm waiting for you to say okay there, S. Eh. Uh, I already made the joke once, I ain't making it a second time. Oh, somebody actually just DM'd me real quick. <laughs> I love Marin Karen and how stupid it can get. Artemisia is going to require some good spacing. Ow. 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 Oh, I was trying to do something I actually saw in tournament. Really? Yes. Well, lucky for me, I know how to meet you. Somewhat. That's yeah. And that's game. That color still looks amazing on Mitsuru. I don't care. It's, it's great. It's great on Mitsuru. It looks amazing, but that's beside the point. Anyway, we're going to refresh and then just go into team combinations. So I'll be right yeah. back. Alright, so it's time to go into team combinations to show some good examples of team building. Yeah, I, I have a 
No. I'm gonna put it bluntly. The team doesn't work as well as you would think. My issue is they're both close-up characters, and that's kind of an issue. Yeah, that is true. I mean close-up characters without a lot of reach. Uh, let's try... hmm. Look, this. Now, there's actually different ways you can make good team building. One is to support a character's gimmick. One of my personal favorites for this is Wald Yukiko. You mean the color I'll be using in Central Fiction? Oh, big time. Why do you always gotta take my colors, you asshole? Cause fuck you, that's why. Ah, oh, Jesus. Anyway. But yeah, the main reason why walled Yukiko really works is it supports Yukiko's main gimmick, her flame boost. Another good Yukiko partner is also Carmine because that supports health management through her healing. Yes, I went there. I can do that shit too. Nice catch. What? Um, game? What? I dropped the setup. See, that's the kind of setup I was talking about beforehand. EX grab active switch, spam flames unless you're full, then go in for Agidon or Moragidon. It works every time. Moragidon's the safer choice, even though it's a little bit slower. That's the kind of setup where even if you don't get it off, Walt still has great buttons and Yukiko has 6P to help with that. So either way, it's a really good setup, and it just supports Yukiko's gimmick very well. Oh god, GA. It saddens me that she's still garbage, but that's beside the point. Come on, can we get an emergency patch? I can only hope! We're doing just team combinations. We're not doing double randoms. Oh, right. <laughs> Dude, why do you think I went while you go there earlier? Do you think I got that in double randoms? No. Probably. Dude, I got an Arakami Jin in randoms once, but that's beside the point. So did I. This is actually another case of a good team building. Tagger S. Although S just goes with everybody. But, in general, I use S for one other reason. Her assist kit actually really supports Tager's game. Mainly her 6P, because when you think about it, if they're blocking it, 
they have to respect the fact that Taker's walking forward, or if they try and jump it, they're going to get anti-aired. Yes, and then if you try and distortion it, try and punish her, which most people won't, you're going to get hit with the cross combo bait into command grab distortion. Most of the time. Ah, Walking Lily Flower. One of the better songs in the game. Basically, to do good team building, you need to consider what you want to do. Whether you want to support a character's gimmick, cover a character's weaknesses while having good assists. I say as I proceed to fuck up massively. Okay. And that was off of a command grab. X plays S is a lot better, just saying. Shut up. I mean, that was the good time for the joke, but god damn it. <laughs> Fair enough. But then again, S is supposed to be kind of monotone. I'll see it in a moment, but one other team that mm, set up that could actually be really strong is knowing how to utilize it for cross combos. Of course, we already talked about that last time, but at the same time, like that's a very key mechanic. So, basically, supporting a character's gimmick, covering their weaknesses while supporting their own game plan. In general, like, finding different ways to cover weaknesses while supporting strengths. Or just supporting a gimmick that just really makes it stupid. There's a lot of different ways you can team build. But, we're going to be discussing more of those as soon as I refresh, because we're not going to be able to finish a match in time. So, back in a moment. Alright, now to get back into it, and yes, for the record, Easy UMI does work. That's another case of good team building because Mai's DP is actually retarded, Sonic Saber Assist is really freaking good. It's also one of the rare cases where Mai prefers to be on point. Yeah. But probably one of the most basic cases of a good team build is this right here, Rock the Hide. Oh, great. Our friend's team. Yes, he knows a lot about this combination. It's a very basic team, but it's basic in an effective way. As we've said before, Hyde's assists are among some of the best in the game. They're simple, but they're really effective at converting. Converting into assists? Converting into basically anything, really. A lot of Rogna's assists are also pretty decent as well, so he can sometimes fulfill the support role if absolutely necessary, but high assists are just really good in general, and just support Rogna's neutral.
Nope. No, but I knew I was going to kill you at that point. You're forgetting something. Like I said, this team is a very basic team build, but it's also extremely effective. That's the key thing. Yeah. And yes, I tried to do Gauntlet Hades combo. Sorry, I disappointed. Hey, I need to, I need to it, so ha ha ha. No, the difference is, I knew the burst was coming. There's a time and a place to just immediately burst. In fact, that's actually one of the worst things you can do in mid combos. When the instant you get the full meter, immediately burst. That's a bad call because most of the time they're gonna see it's coming. A lot of what you'll need to worry about is synergy, and I'm actually going to be trying to do this, but horribly disappointing. No, I'm going to be horribly disappointing because I cannot play new. Oh my god. Any of you who are in the server would recognize this team. <laughs> my and Hyde is a case where, in my opinion, which role they prefer at the start is very much interchangeable. Their assists are both equally re retarded in one way or another. My DP is amazing, and Hyde's point game is full of a lot of good chip damage frame traps. Yeah. And also one of the dirtiest cross-ups in the game. Whereas with this team, it's full of zoning capability, really strong spacing, and it's capable of some really dirty mix-ups with Wald's assists off of Command and Dash. What? No. I'm sorry. How did... What the what? The swords were still going. That's what confused me. A massive amount, in fact. Catastrophe. Fucking right. That is actually a very hard link. That five that five B auto combo into five A auto combo full, I think is near frame perfect. Part of me just feels like I disappointed, but also I feel proud for actually having landed that. Like, this team, though, it's full of so much mix-up potential. It's actually really dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God damn, that's... Why? Is this, is this actual Hyde's day again or something? Oh, my God. Uh, maybe. Actually, I'm gonna think about it. Don't you start. 
<laughs> I kind of already did. <laughs> and then there's a team that's honestly real. There are some really unorthodox teams out there. One of my personal favorites for unorthodox as fuck is actually this. Yes, believe it or not, Noel and Yuzu can actually be really good. As you've seen many times, instant air dashes in this game are really strong. If you're going for jump ins, just instant air dash. Most of the time, anyway. Haas them over for double jump, but that's beside the point. Hey, this mix is actually really good. <laughs> Which is ironic. In general, again, this team, their start is very interchangeable. With my setup, however, I'd recommend Yuzu on point. Also, in my opinion, this is her the most consistent round start. The stupid part is, that's a true block string. Fuck, I did the wrong order. That was your own fault. I should be able to end this fast enough. Connor off of it. Nice. And Noel barely took any damage. Shit! Nice. Won't kill. And refresh. I know someone who would be horribly disappointed that I missed that astral. I think Blake's had more invul in that situation, so that would have won, so I, had to, I tried to play safe. A lot of people can't play Blake, that's the issue. The last kind of team setup I want to talk about, though, is the technical yet creative teams. They're unorthodox, they're really bizarre, and at the same time, they just somehow mesh together beautifully. And prepare for a volume warning, people. Okay, maybe not that much of a volume warning, but still. Don't lie, this team can get really creative. Can you even play Blake efficiently? Right. You know, in talking about good team building, I think I should at least bring out that team at least once.
Yes. Oh, you can't do that. You can't do the faint and make it safe. Good to know. Every time. Get around. Worth it. Fucking blind spots. Did I mention I can't new? Wasn't gonna have time to astral. You saw that, right? Damn it. it bypassed hide completely, and it there was no blocking. You didn't block it. It just went through him. Yeah. See, this is why I say that needs to go full screen. Don't deny that. Redundancy department of redundancy. It's more redundant and more redundant to itself. Yeah, but that's an example of a team that has the potential to get really creative when you know what you're doing. But Seeing as we're talking about good team building, it's unavoidable to talk about this team right here. It's literally unavoidable if we're talking about team building. I'm honestly feeling like an asshole right about now. If you haven't fought Silver Fox like I have, you wouldn't know anywhere near enough of how to deal with this team. Wait, Silver Fox or Silver Fox? Silver Fox. 65th at Evo, Silver Fox. Nope. Because we fought quite a lot. Shout out, dude. The dude's awesome. In fact, it's because of him that I know how to combat this team. Oh, you're actually getting that down. I didn't quite get to show what makes the team so good, unfortunately. Laziest astral ever. 
I love the reference behind it. I just hate how lazily it was animated. Generally, I would recommend Hide On Point over Blake. Uh, point and Blake. Yeah, it with that combination. They're interchangeable, but Hide On Point is just better. Yeah, we have enough time for two, but I will need to refresh real quick. Yeah. All right. We have some time for two proper games. We pretty much discussed most of like the basics of team building. Pretty much what you need to consider is what you want to be doing. Whether you want to be abusing the cross combo metagame, supporting a character's gimmick, covering weaknesses while supporting strengths, or just doing something really unorthodox like Yuzu Noel. There's just a lot of interesting combinations a lot of people can come up with. I don't exactly know the number off the top of my head, but... Yeah, there are hundreds upon hundreds, and I think even thousands, of team combinations. Hold on a minute, I'm gonna do the math for a second. All right. Let's see here. 40, 20 times over. Or is it 40, 19 times over? 193? 720. I think there's like 740 different team combinations in the entire game. Something like that. Smart of you to be respecting... Smart of you to be respecting when it's your turn. That is an unreliable setup because that is minus on block. Was it worth taking all of this, though? Yes. And I'm pretty sure that it's like, you know, okay. I could have made that true if I was fast enough, but I wasn't. Uh, I, I, I got sandwich right there. No, you got just, you just got hit with the ambiguous mix-up. But yeah, I think there's like 740 different team combinations. Oh wait, no. I'm actually wrong on that. 190, 380, you double that, that's 760. There's 780 different team combinations in the entire game. No, it's not almost endless. There's an end to it. 780 team combinations. Of course there's going to be an end to it. But at the end of the day, with that many teams, it becomes hard to really say what's balanced and what's not. And that's one of the main charming points about the game as a whole. The amount of combinations allows for so many people to get really creative. The main downside, though, is, again, the way the meta is. But that's beside the point. Kind of what I would like to see more in the future. Honestly, what I would like to see more of in the future. Oh, how fucking perfect! Hold on, I might just turn this up because it's heartful. It's fucking heartful cry. Thank you. No, that was the second podcast we did that with. Yes. 
every time. I try to set up 6P, then go for embers to start pressure go get pressure going, and then I'm like... Shit, tried to anti-air it. You saw that, too. Nice catch. I really don't want to go into semblance this time. Every time today. That wasn't exactly the most optimal thing in the world. Nice, instant overhead. Thank God I got that because you would have forced me to go into semblance and I never I refuse to interrupt Heartful Cry unless I have to. Pardon that. Also, let me go ahead and turn that back down. That was basically just ex examples of good team building that we did like throughout most of it. We also discussed like how exactly we should be team. Most people will team build, and in general, like I said, with 780 different combinations, there's a lot of freedom. However, unfortunately, I do feel like there are some teams that just don't work. And just to get those out of the way real quick, most teams with Chie, sadly, because Chie is just bad. Most teams with Makoto, except for Carmine, that one's pretty good. Gordo works with basically everybody. Ruby is one of those you could pair with almost anyone. Hyde is one of those that goes with everybody. S, you could argue Jin. Narukami, although you really have to know what you're doing. And in general, there's just a lot of com- There's some combinations that just don't work, unfortunately. But there's a lot that do. Feel free to pick whatever you feel like if you really want to just have fun with the game. But we're running out of time, so what's it going to be for next time? Next time will probably be how each team has revolts. How we can cover- how you can cover, like, team weaknesses and whatnot, and how to work around them. So, that's going to be what will be next time. But until the next podcast, Sonic here. And we'll see you guys later. Take it easy, everyone.